Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 12. Day number 12. It says, it says 3012, the 3 denotes, denotes the fact that these are, this is the third edition that we are working through. And we are on page number 161. Page 161, we are going to work on the problems on this page, page 161. The very first one, problem number 3, looks something like this, we are given a picture. And we're being asked to figure out it looks like a kite, and we're being asked to figure out the area of this quadrilateral A, B, C, D. It's important that you have the book in front of you. You must have the book in front of you. You tell me, do we know anything else besides what we what you see on the blackboard? The other thing we know is that we are told that the diameter of this thing is 10. We are told the diameter of this, this, this circle is 10. That's very important information, otherwise we will not be able to do anything with it. The question is, which quantity is bigger? Which quantity is bigger? Column A, which shows the area of the quadrilateral, or column B, which shows 40. Column A, page 161, or column B, this shows the area of A, B, C, D, or 4D. Let's see what we can do here. What we have to understand here, and what was, and what was me, what what we have to understand here, and what we must remember at all times during the JRE is that all the pictures that you that you that you come across, all the figures that you come across, they are all not drawn to scale. We cannot take liberties just by looking at something. If A to B seems longer than B to C, we cannot just assume that it's longer unless there is something in the problem that gives us enough information to establish that. Here, we just have a quadrilateral. We do not know exactly where this point B and B and D are sitting. This is one possibility. There are infinite possibilities. Let's start with the extreme scenarios, two extreme scenarios. The extreme scenario, one extreme scenario is if this is a circle, let me do it in a different color so we can see it. If this is a circle, then one extreme scenario would be it goes like this, like that, and like this. It makes a square. It makes a square. Stay with me in the story here. I'm going to I'm going to read redraw it. I'm going to redraw it here so it's easier for us to deal with. So here's our diameter. Here's the other diameter, and essentially it makes a square. This is point A, point B, point C, and point D. Let's talk about the area area of the triangle. Can we figure out the area of the triangle BCD? B C D in this case. Well, how do we find the area? Area is simply one half base times height, one half, one half base, which is going to be B to D, this is the base, which is 10. Why 10? Because we are told in the problem the diameter of this circle is 10. And the height for this triangle B C D, B C D, height for this triangle will be this part right here which is simply the radius, which is 5. Divide top and bottom by 5 and you get 5 times 5 which is 25. So the area of this triangle here is 25 and the area of this triangle here is also 25. In other words, the area of the square, if it's drawn like this, would be 50. And here we have 40. If that is how it is, in that case the answer would be A. Now let's look at the other extreme scenario. The other extreme scenario, what we need to understand here is that The 
the other extreme scenario that we need to understand here is the center and we are given something like this so something like this is what we have right now something like this is what we have right now but there is no reason why this distance that is, that is shown here like this cannot be very small like maybe here in which case what we are looking at is something like this in the blue color okay this Let's, let's erase the black one. Let's erase the black one altogether. We don't need it. It's going to confuse us. What happens here? Let's think about it for a second. As we keep pushing it up and up and up, as we keep pushing it up and up and up, the height of this triangle <coughs> approaches zero. It is so tiny. This side is so, 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 so tiny that it approaches zero, asymptotically speaking. Asymptotically speaking, I don't know how to spell asymptote. I don't know why I brought it up. We learned this word, I know that. And it's not actually a word, it's something we we'll come across in mathematics. We all know what an asymptote is, but if you use it in English language it, or in mathematics, it's a noun. Asymptotic would be the adjective, and we just use it as an adverb, asymptotically speaking. Which will be an adverb. So asymptotically speaking, in other words, as we keep pushing this line which was here, we move it higher, we higher, 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 higher. As we keep pushing it higher, this height approaches zero. As the height approaches zero, the area of this triangle right here, because of the fact that height is zero, it will get zero. Similarly, as we go higher and higher and higher, what do you suppose this this triangle that we're talking now, the other triangle, this one right here, what happens? What do you suppose this happens to this triangle? Here, the base of this triangle, base of this red triangle that I drew, which is this part here, what happens to that base as we go higher and higher and higher? The base was here. It goes here, it gets smaller, smaller, is the length of the chord, isn't it? The length of this chord, is, as, we, as we move higher, 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 the length of this chord approaches zero. As the length of the chord approaches zero, which is the base of this triangle, approaches zero. And the top triangle, as we move higher and higher, the height of the triangle approaches zero. In other words, in theory, if you make this thing, this, uh, this uh, quadrilateral, so skinny, that it's almost has a zero area, asymptotically speaking, in the, uh, uh, as we take the limit. So the most extreme case, the most, most extreme case is that the highest, the highest, the maximum that it can have is 50, in which case the answer is A, because it's 50 is more than 40, or it could very well be 40, in which case the answer would be C, or it could be very, very close to zero, it could be very close to zero, it could be 0.1 or 0 0.001 and so forth, in which case we are comparing with 40, the answer would be B. We do not know. We do not know what the area of this uh, quadrilateral is based on what is, what is given to us. All that is given to us is the fact that the diameter is, diameter is 10. But we also, they also have to tell you this distance right here. If they, if they tell us this distance right here, if somehow if we have this distance, then we can very easily figure out the area of this quadrilateral Otherwise, we cannot. All we can say is that the maximum area it can have is when it degenerates into the form of a square, in which case the area would be 50, or it gets so tiny that it almost collapses. It almost collapses because the height of the top triangle approaches zero, and, and, the, and as it does that, the base of this triangle approaches zero, in which case the area is, area of this quadrilateral will be zero in the in the limit as we approach the uh, in, uh, uh, limit uh, as I'm totally speaking as I said so the, uh, the answer here is D we cannot tell we cannot tell the next three problems are more straightforward we don't have to spend this much time on the next three problems they are quite straightforward problem number problem number four Still the same page, page 161, problem number 4. 
we have x squared times y, we are told is positive. And we are also told, let's keep them separate, we are told that x squared times y is positive, and we are also told that x times y squared is negative. And we are being asked to compare, we are being asked to compare x and y. Column A is x and column B is y. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. But we are told that x squared times y is positive. We know x squared, because it is being squared, will always be positive. Will always be positive. The fact that some positive quantity times y is greater than zero, that in that in fact that apply that in that in turn implies that y must be positive. Y cannot be negative. Otherwise we'll end up with positive times negative. Positive times negative cannot be more than zero. The fact that x squared times y is positive, x squared we know is always going to be positive. Doesn't matter what x is, whether x is positive or negative, x squared will always be positive because it's being squared. So positive times positive will be, will be positive, in which case y must be positive. Y must be a positive quantity. Let's go to this one here. Exact opposite, exact opposite argument will go here. We know y squared is positive. And we are told that that quantity times some other quantity is negative. Well, then some other quantity must be negative. X has to be negative because negative times positive will give us something less than zero. X is a negative quantity, whatever it is, and Y is a positive quantity, therefore the answer is B. Therefore the answer is B. Let's move on to number five. I keep erasing the page number. I do not know why I do that. Number five. It's very annoying. We have 9,000 spectators, we are told. We are told that x of them are from college C. We are told that y of them are from other colleges. Column A is asking us for the people who are not students. And in column B, we have a quantity 9000 minus x minus y. Let's see what we can do. Let's read the question actually properly. You have the book in front of you, you read it yourself. It says, among the 9000 people attending the football game at college C, there were x students from college C. Alright, and y from other, other colleges. Column A says, the number of people attending the game who were not students. How many of the spectators, given the fact that there were 9,000 in total, how many of those 9,000 spectators were not students? Well, let's find out, shall we? So 9,000 is the total, we are told that, right here. 9,000 is the total number of spectators, out of which X of them are from college C. We have to take that away because they are students. And then Y number of students are from all the other colleges. If we subtract the number of students who are attending the uh, who are uh, who are attending the game who are from from our own college, the game is played on our campus. So we are subtract the number of our own students who are watching the game in the, in the in the stadium, and the number of students that came from all the other colleges. If we subtract that, all we are left with must be the number of people who are watching the game but are not students. People who are not students who are attending the game. It says, column A says, the number of people attending the game who are not students, which is this, 9000 minus x minus y, which is exactly what we have in column B. The answer is C. The answer is C. Let's move on. This was problem number five. Let's move on to six. Problem number six. Well, problem number six is a silly one. It's just absolutely silly. They tell you that x is not equal to zero. That's okay. That's good. Good to know. I don't even know what the bloody point of this thing is. It's for those people who do not know the exp exponents. But I hope that you do that. That you know that. Here, I will not explain every single step. This is for those people who do not require too much help. 
if you require, uh, if, if I do something here without explaining something, and if you're lost, watch the original series, watch the original series, and you will find that the problems that we're solving today were solved on day number. Thirty-nine through forty-one. So, if you need help, if you, if you want to go at a much slower pace, and if you want me to explain everything to you, every single step, then watch the original series, which appeared the same exact problem that appeared in the first edition of the of the of the of the book, and we have already solved every single problem from this book, and you will find the same problem from day number thirty-nine through forty-one. Here, I'm not going to explain everything. We're just going to do it. So, here we have x times x squared to the cube, which is x to the sixth, over x to the second, which is simply x to the seventh over x squared, which is simply x to the fifth. That's all. That's all, because we have to just add and subtract the exponents. I'm debating whether or not I want to start the next page. No, let's not do the next page. We'll do one page at a time. Tomorrow we'll work on the next page. Okay, bye now.